All right, YouTube, this is Mark from Python for Trading here, and the goal of this video is to go over the BitMEX trading bot I made on my GitHub, and a lot of people don't really understand how it works, and I do concede that the trading bot is complicated. However, the goal of this video is to go over the lines of code and make how the trading bot works uh, more clear for everyone that's viewing the video. So at the very beginning, we're gonna just quickly briefly go over what's being imported in this program. So CCXT is what we're gonna be using to get the candlestick data from BitMEX, Pandas data frame self-explanatory, BS4 is used for web scraping, and we will be using web scraping to get bid and ask prices directly from the BitMEX website. And we're doing this because we have very limited API calls per minute. So web scraping is a good alternative to save on API calls. TA lib is going to be used for the mathematics of the technical indicators. NumPy is uh, self-explanatory. BitMEX 1 is the alternative we're going to be using to connect into the official BitMEX API. I feel that this particular BitMEX wrapper is better in a lot of ways, and I'll show you why later on. And everything is self-explanatory there, so just in this chunk of code. Um, this code is optimized to run both on Windows and non-Windows, so I guess Linux and Mac. So what this does is, what the bot does essentially is we have states. So as a human, we could remember information to be used for later purposes, but a training bot is not so smart. So the information of, about the algorithm or the market needs to be saved for the computer to read for a later purpose. So just to begin, we can delete all the states. So it will be deleted. And what the Python is going to do is it's going to create uh, just the TXT files to for all the states to be stored for later purposes. And I think you should do this once uh, when you're following along with this video. So moving on. Um, so if true, so what this does is you probably want to change it to while true. So if true will just make the program loop one time, but while true will make the program loop infinite times. So that, that's kind of like a cool trick you could do. So the API key and secret key, those are your BitMEX API keys. Uh, so we're just connecting the, the API keys to, whoops, we're connecting the API keys to the BitMEX uh, server using the wrapper that's included, creating a pandas data frame of open, high, low, close in time, volume as well. And um, so this particular portion of the code is uh, being used for the web scraping. So what we do with web scraping is that we get all the text um, of a particular website and then we use text manipulation to extract the specific bid and ask price of Ethereum and going further down uh, this is just this is just creating the candlestick data uh, it, it's orientating it into the very particular portions of the pandas data frame they belong to and at the final result is the open high low close volume of the one hour candlesticks that we will be obtaining. So now what this is doing, it's called state of the algo. So with the states that I talked about earlier, these are going to be loaded into the trading bots memory per se. So it could be used for later decision making later on. So nothing special. Um, I'll go over this part of the code right here. So bitmex balance. So it, we're just, you know, text manipulation, extracting from the text, we're getting the BitMEX balance. Now, right here, order check. So BitMEX uses a particular parser called used in the JSON. And what we'll be doing very uh, to make things very simple is that it's normally, if it, there's no trade open, the use, it's going to be called, it's going to be used. Actually, I'll run the code just to make it very simple. Okay, it's just running. So what will happen is is 
used is going to just be zero. So right here, used, zero BTCs used, and to in total, zero BTC used. So if a trade is open, it's not going to be, it's going to be a different value from zero, zero. So what you do is I'm checking if there's one, if there's an integer number in the used. I, I know that's a very uh, technical explanation for something so simple, but you, it's very important you have the logic if we're in a trade or not in a trade because uh, that's pro mo probably one of the most, most important parts of this trading bot. Uh, moving on really quickly. So just going over actually just so from the output perspective, right? So do we download the candle data? We're looking at the, the states of the algorithm. So because we deleted all the text files there's uh this the states are going to be empty uh so this is this right here is just declaring that we're not in a trade the balance so because this is an empty bitmex account the balance is going to be zero and the amount of contracts we could buy with two times leverage is also zero and um the training bot in particular can't, supports leverage which is why i included that particular bitmex wrapper because it's more simple for new users to understand how to set leverage with this wrapper compared to the official bitmex wrapper so i'll go into the strategy but the current rsi value is 56 and for it to execute a trade the rsi value has to be over 80 or under 20 to open up a long and short trade respectively and now just going down the code. So this is another thing I, I have in my algorithm. So debugging menu. And this is also important because if you're implementing something new on top of my strategy, you could add whatever you're implementing into the debug menu. So the debug menu will force particular states or market conditions to be a certain way. So if you're trying to orient logic when you're programming, and you're not sure how things are going to play out with the debugging menu, you could see how your, you, you purposely manipulate data values and you will see how they will adjust the states of your algorithm or, or other things. So it's just good just for not, not when you're live trading, obviously, but just so how you could fickle around and orient your states in a sufficient manner that will be uh, appropriate for your trading strategy. So, state of the market, um, it's getting the bid as price, the current RSI, the previous RSI, as we see here. And, whoops. Okay, don't worry about that. Uh, and lastly, the trading strategy. So, I have a very simple current RSI is, well, the current RSI is 56. So, it's not going to be triggering below 20 or over 80. So, it's just going to... Uh, Return the string, no longing opportunity, R size ranging, no shorting opportunity, R size ranging. So, all right, lastly with this, with the video, I want to go over the API calls per minute. And this is, a, once again, a very important specific thing to talk about with the algorithm. So, we want to set the sleep to at least 15 because we have certain amount of API calls per minute and... You will get IP blocked for a period of four hours if you exceed the expected API calls, which is very scary as an algo trader because you can't even log in and change your your trades or anything in real time. So it's very important that uh, it, you have a sleep or else you BitMEX will boot you off and you'll have a bad day in trading. Oh, and now actually really quickly, right, I, I wanted to go over why I particularly like BitMEX. It's kind of a weird thing, but a lot of people prefer Binance. But my issue with Binance is that, or my issue with most crypto exchanges that are not BitMEX in particular is because I am a big enthusi enthusiast of short selling. So the crypto coins, they go, they pump really hard up, but they also dip really hard low so my goal as an algorithm trader with my sophisticated set of algorithms i would be using on the market i want to short and long the market so shorting actually to be specific a couple days ago i made a nice profit shorting because 
Ethereum dumped 13% and with two times leverage, I, I made a very nice profit. But I, I'm just I'm just explaining why hypothetically you would want to short sell because you're going to grow your Bitcoin balance in your BitMEX account on both of the directions, not just longing. So with a traditional exchange like Binance, you just buy Ethereum and you hope it goes up. If Ethereum goes down, you lost money in your investment. But if you short sell Ethereum when it goes down, you will be rewarded in Bitcoin while it goes down. So it's just something to think about. And I think it's, uh, I would say BitMEX is probably the best exchange just because of short selling. If it wasn't for short selling, then Binance would be better. But I particularly trade Ethereum and US dollar due to the very high volatility and it's I think it's the most profitable uh, venture to be algo trading currently in the crypto market but that's enough about me I hope you learned something in this video if you have any questions just leave a comment on github on the telegram on the youtube comments this is kind of a, a rushed video but I hope that essentially you learned something from it and have a good day guys and goodbye